Hello, so Doggo friends, and welcome to a hard puzzle. This time, not by the New York Times, but rather by Sudoku.com. I have uh, in the past shown you a puzzle of the expert and evil levels, and I thought today we would take it a little slower and we'll just look at a hard puzzle. Uh, I just pulled one up from the site and I entered the puzzles into this grid here because I can better show you the movements of the mouse and uh, explain what I'm doing while I'm doing it in this interface. This is probably not going to be a difficult uh, puzzle, so I hope you might follow the video anyway without uh, getting upset. There are some beginner solvers among my new subscribers, I think, and uh, we will just take it slowly uh, for this puzzle. And uh, in the next couple of days, I'll revert back to more difficult puzzles, I think. As you know, this is a channel uh, devoted to solving classical Sudokus without using pencil marks whenever possible. And uh, I will also endeavor to do this today and we'll see how it goes. When I try to solve a puzzle, I always look at three rows together. It's called the tube, I think. And I look at three columns together because each of these three by three blocks needs to have the numbers one through nine in them. So if a number for example, in this case, nine is already in this box, then it cannot go one more time in this box. And there's also a nine in this box and it happens to be in the third row. So it's quite easy, I think, to see that we will need to find a nine for this box as well. And since there cannot be more than one nine in a row or in a column or in a box, we know that this nine here blocks all of these cells from being a nine, and this nine here blocks all of these cells from being a nine in those two rows. And of course, these two cells cannot contain a nine because we already have a nine in this three by three box. Uh, and at the same time, these three cells cannot contain a nine because we have a nine in the box already. So it's pretty clear, I think, now that a nine for this row and for this box will have to go in one of these two cells. And as usual, I start the puzzle by familiarizing myself with some of the major digits. For example, the four here blocks the four from going anywhere in these cells. So I know that a four for this box up here will have to go in one of these three cells. And therefore, it also is clear that a four will have to go in one of these two cells because there's no other space for a four in this column. If a four is going to go in one of these and this four here prevents a four from going in any of these three cells. So a four will have to go here or here. I know that this is quite obvious to many of you but some of my new subscribers may not think about a puzzle this way. And uh, I think it's uh, important when we solve puzzles that we try to use a system. And one of the things that I always do is when I look at this line here, I can see the eight. The eight blocks all of these cells from containing an eight. And this eight blocks all of these cells from being an eight. And that means that an eight for this box here must go either here or here. This eight and this eight block all of these cells from containing an eight. And that leaves only this cell and this cell. And while we don't know yet whether the eight will go here or here, we know that it will go in one of these two cells and therefore it can go in no other place in this column and therefore not in these three cells either. So now we have this eight blocking these three cells and we have an eight here or here blocking these three cells. And that means that all of these cells are blocked from being an eight. And that leaves only the cell for an eight for this box and therefore also for this row. And this is basically all there is to it. So the eight here and the eight here 
block all of these cells from being an eight, right? And the eight here blocks these three cells from being a, an eight. And now for this box, all of these cells are blocked by eights that can see them like so. The eight here, and the eight here, and the eight here, they can see all of these cells and therefore they cannot contain an eight. And that leaves again, just one cell for an eight and it needs to go here. And that gives us an eight for this column here because an eight now cannot go in this cell nor in this cell because of these two eights. They block these two cells, right? So an eight for this column will have to go in one of these three cells. And it so happens that this eight blocks this cell and this eight blocks this cell, leaving only this cell free for an eight. You have probably already noticed that I don't follow the pattern that many other use. I don't go by the numbers one through nine. I kind of take a holistic view of the entire grid and see what uh, I can spot. Because if I go by one through nine, it might take a longer time to get through the entire puzzle. And while I could use pencil marks, of course, and thereby finish the puzzle probably sooner and sometimes a lot sooner than if I don't use pencil marks, I just don't find the challenge worthwhile. So that's why I don't use the pencil marks if I can get away with it. And what just jumps into my field of vision is the nine here and the nine here. Uh, these nines block these two cells and these two cells, don't they? And therefore a nine for this column will have to go in this cell. The next obvious number that comes to mind is a six. And that six will have to go in this cell here because the six here blocks all of these cells from containing a six. And we have a six down here in the corner and that blocks these two cells. So these three cells now cannot contain a six, again, leaving just a single cell for a six like so. And here's another little trick. Well, it's not even a trick. It's just a pattern that uh, you can always rely on for most puzzles. Look at the two, three, and a nine here. We talked about a tube being these three by three, and these three by three, and these three by three, or these three columns. Now we cannot have a two, three, and a nine anymore in this column, can we? So we need to distribute a two, three, and a nine among these other three cells. And since a two and a three and a nine cannot go into these three cells anymore because they are already in this box, we need to find space for them in these three empty cells. So we now know that this cell will have to be a three or a nine. This cell will have to be a two or a nine, and this cell could be any of the three. But what's more important is that we now know that these three cells will have to be a one, seven, and an eight, because that would complete the column, a one, seven, and an eight. So if we have a ghost eight in this cell or in this cell, it can't go here, of course, because of the eight, and we have an eight down here, we now know that we need to find an eight for one of these three cells. And it's gotta be this one here because we've got this eight here and we've got this eight and they block these two cells. So this is now an eight. And by the way, one of these will have to be a seven, right? So this cell here cannot be a seven and these two cannot be a seven. Therefore, these two can both contain a seven, but those are the only two cells in this box that can contain a seven. And the uh, ghost seven here and this seven will give me a seven for one of these two cells. It's not something I can use right now, but it's something I keep in memory so I don't have to analyze it again later. So I can't do much more with the one seven and an eight here, but at least I found this eight. What I can do, however, is uh, think about what these three cells now have to be. If these have to be a one, seven, and an eight, then uh, have to be a four, five, and a six. And we have a five and a six in this row already. So this cell here must be a four. And these two cells now have to be a five and a six. 
And we can find a three, I think. Look at the three here. The three here blocks these two cells. Uh, they can't contain a three. And look at the three here. This three blocks these cells from being a three. So we know that a three for this box here will have to go in this cell or in this cell. One of these two cells must contain a three. And uh, we, we call this a ghost three. So a ghost three here and a three here puts a three in this cell or in this cell. And uh, how does that help us, you ask? Well, look at this row, row eight. We need to find a three for this row. And since it clearly can't go here or here now, because we just found out that it needs to go in one of these two cells, then this is the only cell left that can take a three. And that gives us a two. Because the two up here blocks all of these cells from being a two. This two here blocks all of these cells from being a two. So a two must go here. Remember how we found out that the two, three, and a nine will have to go in these three cells in some order? Well, now we know that the nine must go here because we already have a two and a three. And uh, that means that a two and a three can't go in this cell. Therefore, it must be a nine. And now these two cells must be a two and a three. And we know which goes where because we already have a three in this row. So the th two must go here and the three must go here. And we can find another two and the two will have to go in this cell. Uh, let me explain. We need to find a two for this column. And the two here blocks this cell. The two here and the two here block these two cells. And the two here blocks this cell. So there's only this cell that can take a two. And now uh, when we find a, a digit like this, we immediately scan left and we see that uh, this two and this two, they block these four cells from containing twos, right? And the two here blocks these three cells. And again, we have only one cell left for a two. And this is where it goes. Let's uh, go back and look at these cells again. Do you remember uh, what had to go into these two cells? Yes, a five and a six, because we already have a six and a five that block these three cells. Therefore, these two will have to be a five and a six. And uh, while we don't know what to do with them at the moment, we do know that that leaves only this cell and this cell and this cell to be filled. And they have to be filled with the remainder, and that has to be a one and a seven and a nine. We have a nine here that blocks this cell, and we have a nine here that blocks this cell. And therefore, this cell must be a nine. And now we just need to find a one and a seven for these two cells. And that's easy enough because we already have this seven that blocks a seven from these two cells. So this is going to be a one and this is going to be a seven. And now we have this seven here that blocks all of these cells from being a seven. And we have the seven here that blocks these two cells and these two cellments here block all of these cells from being sevens. So again, just one cell will take a seven and that's here. The four and a seven that we need to fill these two empty cells will have to be distributed with a four going here and a seven here, of course, because of this seven. And now we need a one and a five for these two. And there's a one already that blocks this cell. The five must go here and the one must go here. It's always useful to just uh, cast a glance at, the, at the, the digits across a puzzle. Uh, we have a nine that blocks these two cells, right? And we have a nine here that blocks these three cells. So let's just uh, enter a nine here, shall we? And immediately we scan upwards and we see if uh, this nine will help us find another digit. And I believe it will because 
we have a nine here and we have a nine here and they block these three cells. Now we have this nine that blocks this cell. And therefore a nine will have to go here. And we can continue with the nines because we have a nine here and we have a nine here. And now we have a nine here. And that leaves only this cell. I think we're making a pretty good uh, progress. And uh, yes, so that's it for the nines. And it's easy to see that uh, we still need to find two digits for these uh, two cells. And the only ones missing from the row is going to be a four and a three. While we don't know which goes where, we know that that leaves this cell and that's going to be a five. Now this cell will have to be a three or this cell will have to be a three and the other one will have to be a four. So a three, four here, a three, four here and a three, four here. These three cells will have to be a three, four and a six and they can't be placed at this time. But uh, we can work with the, this row here. We need to find a four, five and a seven to fill this row. We have a five here and a seven here and therefore this cell cannot be a five or a seven. The only digit left is going to be a four and the five and a seven will have to go here. I mentioned that we couldn't do anything about these uh, three cells, but uh, actually we can. Remember the three here that uh, blocks all of these cells and the three here that blocks these two cells, leaving a three for one of these two cells. So the ghost three here and the three here forces a three into this cell. And now these two have to be a four and a six. And the cell up here, the lonely cell, of course, now is going to be a six. And that fixes the six and the five that we had waiting for us up here. This is now going to be a five and this is going to be a six. We need to find a three and a six for these two empty cells. And there's a three already here that blocks this cell from being a three. So that's a six and this is a three now. And I believe that that uh, solves a few problems. The six here and the six here block these two cells. And the six here blocks these two cells. So we have now found the six for this row. And of course, this cell now must be a four. The four here and here, they block these cells. And this four blocks this cell. And that gives us a four for the top row. Now we just need to find a one and an eight for this cell and for this cell. And that's easy enough because we have a one already down here. So this cell up here must be an eight and this is going to be a one. The two other digits here, if we remember, were going to be an eight and a seven. We have an eight already in this row. So the seven will have to go here and the eight must go here now. These cell, if we recall, will have to be a five and a seven. Therefore, these two must be a four and a six. And we already have a six here and that blocks the cell right here from being a six. Therefore, this is a four and this is a six. And uh, we still needed a three and a four for these two cells, right? Now, now this four puts a three in this cell and a four in this one. And now this four and this four and the four here puts a four in this cell. There's no other place it can go. And this now must be a three. And the three here and the three here and the three here leaves only this cell for a three in this row. As I just mentioned, these two have to be a five and a seven. And because there are only two empty cells in this column, then this cell also must be a five or a seven. And since there is a five already that blocks this cell, we know now that it's a seven and this is a five and therefore this must be a seven. And the five here blocks this cell. Therefore the five for this column must go here. And the last digit is a one, it goes here. And that gives us a one for this cell. And this is now a two. The two here and the two here 
put the two in this cell and the other digit that we were missing is going to be a five. And that puts a five in this cell. And the last remaining digit is a one, it goes here. So you see this uh, is supposed to be a hard puzzle, uh, but as I think I have clearly demonstrated, if you sit down and think a little bit about it, you don't really need pencil marks because logic alone and remembering a few digits will get you to the goal and you see how easy it can be to solve such a puzzle. I hope that you enjoyed it and that uh, if you are an advanced solver that you weren't too bored. I'm sure that you already solved this puzzle ahead of me anyway. Thank you for watching and please come back for more soon. Bye for now.